The Second Desmond Rebellion was the more widespread and bloody of the two Desmond rebellions launched by the Fitzgerald dynasty of Desmond in Munster, Ireland, against English rule in Ireland. The Second Rebellion began in July 1579 when James Fitzmaurice Fitzgerald landed in Ireland with a force of papal troops triggering an insurrection across the south of Ireland on the part of the Desmond dynasty, their allies and others who were dissatisfied for various reasons with English government of the country. The rebellion ended with the 1583 death of Gerald Fitzgerald, 15th Earl of Desmond and the defeat of the rebels. The rebellion was in equal part a protest by feudal lords against the intrusion of central government into their domains a conservative Irish reaction to English policies that were altering traditional Gaelic society, and a religious conflict, in which the rebels claimed that they were upholding Catholicism against a Protestant queen who had been pronounced a heretic in 1570 by the papal bull Raynans in Excelsis. The result of the rebellions was the destruction of the Desmond dynasty and the subsequent Munster plantations, the colonization of Munster with English settlers. In addition the fighting laid waste to a large part of the south of Ireland. War-related famine and disease are thought to have killed up to a third of Munster's pre-war population. Background First Rebellion, 1569-73 The Munster branch of the Fitzgeralds, known as the Geraldines, were holders of the title Earl of Desmond, which at the time of the rebellions was held by Gerald Fitzgerald, 15th Earl of Desmond, referred to here as the Earl of Desmond. The First Desmond Rebellion had been an armed protest against English intrusion into the Desmond territories. Specifically it was against the creation of the office of Lord President in the province of Munster and the English pursuit of policies that favoured the Fitzgerald's rivals, the Butlers of Ormond, and various English colonists. The most pressing grievance of the Geraldines had been the government's arrest of Gerald the Earl and his brother John of Desmond in 1568 for their part in a private war against the Butlers in 1565 which had culminated in the Battle of Affina in County Waterford. The First Desmond Rebellion was launched in 1569, in the absence of the Desmond leadership, by James Fitzmaurice Fitzgerald, the Captain General of the Fitzgerald Army. That rebellion was quashed by the English Crown forces and their Irish allies, and ended in 1573. Out comes the English response after the first rebellion was conciliation of the Geraldines. Fitzmaurice, the leader of the rebellion, was pardoned and the Earl and his brother John of Desmond were released from imprisonment and returned to their lands. As late as 1579, it looked most unlikely that the Fitzgeralds would again challenge English rule in Munster. However, a combination of personal, economic and religious factors, and the actions of James Fitzmaurice Fitzgerald himself, led to an explosion of rebellion in July of that year. Fitzmaurice, who had led the first rebellion, found himself without property and powerless after peace was restored. Lands that he had inherited were confiscated and colonized by English settlers. The Earl of Desmond was forbidden from exacting military service and quartering his troops on his dependents, and he was reduced to maintaining only 20 horsemen in his private service. This abolition by the government of private armies meant that Fitzmaurice, who was a professional soldier, was without a source of income. Fitzmaurice was therefore impoverished, and in 1574 he was evicted by the Earl from lands he had been renting since 1573. On top of these discontents, Fitzmaurice also had a genuine commitment to the Catholic Counter-Reformation and a deep antipathy to Protestantism, which had been introduced into Ireland by the English. Fitzmaurice left Ireland for France in 1575, seeking help from Catholic powers to restart the rebellion. Second Rebellion The factors which drove Fitzmaurice into rebellion also created a wide pool of potential rebels in Southern Ireland. 
Firstly, the disbanded Irish soldiers from various lords' private armies faced destitution and even death in an English-ruled Ireland. In the wake of the First Desmond Rebellion, Henry Sidney, the Lord Deputy of Ireland and William Drury, the Lord President of Munster, had up to 700 unemployed or masterless soldiers executed, judging them to be a danger to the public peace. The surviving mercenary soldiers in Munster would form the backbone of the coming rebellion. Secondly, many of the local Irish lords felt that their interests were threatened by the English policy of plantations, confiscating land for which the owner did not have an English title and establishing English colonies on it. Thirdly, the imposition of seneschals or English military governors in various areas where the locals' leaders had previously been independent meant that some chieftains, such as Fiac McHugh O'Byrne of the Wicklow Mountains, were already engaged in a low-level war with the English authorities throughout the 1570s. Finally, cultural and religious conflict also played a role in fermenting discontent. In the early 1570s, Sir John Perrow, the English Lord Deputy, had banned aspects of traditional Gaelic Irish culture, including Brehon law, Bardic Irish language poetry and Irish dress. In addition, the English had introduced Protestantism as the state religion in Ireland, whereas the majority of the population were Roman Catholic. This was an increasingly important proof of loyalty to the Dublin administration after the promulgation of Pope Pius V as a papal bull reign in Zin, Excelsis in 1570, when the papacy excommunicated Elizabeth and her officials, aborted invasion of 1578. In exile in Europe from 1575, Fitzmaurice tried to get backing for a new rebellion. He intrigued at the French and Spanish courts for a foreign invasion of Ireland. However, Philip II of Spain showed no interest in supporting him, as he was already overstretched fighting the Dutch revolt in the Netherlands. Fitzmaurice had more success, though, at the court of Pope Gregory XIII where he met with exiled English Roman Catholic priests such as William Allen and Nicholas Sanders who were seeking to invade England, depose Elizabeth and restore a Catholic monarchy. With the English adventurer Captain Thomas Stuckley, Fitzmaurice planned an expedition which was to make Giacomo Bon Compagna, the nephew of Pope Gregory, King of Ireland. This was supported by the English Catholics. Stuckley was provided by the Pope with infantry and sailed from Civita Vecchia in Rome with 1,000 men in March 1578, including pardoned highwaymen, musketeers and some professional officers, including Hercules of Pisano and Sebastiano di San Giuseppe of Bologna. In Cadiz in Spain he added some Irishmen and King Philip II sent him to Lisbon to secure better ships and meet with Fitzmaurice. Having no ships to offer, King Sebastian of Portugal instead invited Stuckley to join an invasion of Morocco. Stuckley was killed there in August 1578 of the Battle of Alcasa Quiber, thus ending Fitzmaurice's initial plans for invading Ireland. 1579 Invasion Nicholas Sanders, Fitzmaurice and others returned to Rome and formed a new expedition with papal authority. With a small force of Irish, Spanish and Italian troops, they set sail for Ireland in early June 1579 from Corona in Galicia, Spain. The fleet consisted of Fitzmaurice's own vessel and three Spanish shallops. Fitzmaurice was joined by Matthew de Oviedo and by Nicholas Sanders as papal commissary. En route in the English Channel, they captured two English vessels and arrived at Dingle Harbour on 16 July. On 18 the they cast anchor in the nearby small Smerrick Harbour, where they established a defensive garrison at Dun in OIR, an Iron Age promontory fort nearby. Nicholas Sanders paraded the papal banner with some ceremony at Dingle and Fitzmaurice proclaimed holy war sanctioned by letters from Pope Gregory. This was a very serious matter in 16th century thinking, as it released the Catholic subjects of Elizabeth I from their duty of obedience to her, on the grounds that she was a heretic. 
The fact that Fitzmaurice had openly challenged the legitimacy of the Tudor dynasty to rule Ireland meant that, unlike the First Desmond Rebellion of 1569-73, this one would be very unlikely to end with a negotiated peace. The rebels were joined on 25 July by two galleys with 100 more Spanish troops. Rebellion begins. Fitzmaurice's small force might well have been crushed rapidly had he not been joined on 1 August by John of Desmond. John Fitzedmund Fitzgerald, like Fitzmaurice, had been a soldier and had a large following among his kinsmen and the disaffected and unemployed soldiers of Munster. It was only after John's joining of the rebellion that it was joined by these soldiers in large numbers. John and his brother, James Fitzedmund Fitzgerald, the Seneschal of Amokley, marked their entry into the rebellion by assassinating two English officials, Henry Devils and Arthur Carter in a tavern in Tralee. John of Desmond and Fitzmaurice together commanded a force of over 3,000 men, including a small number of European soldiers, and several thousand native Irish troops. The prospect of further continental reinforcements was hampered though, when Sir William Winter, on 29 July 1579, four days after the landing at Smerwick, seized the ships of the invasion force and cut off their sea routes. The Earl of Desmond, who was reasonably satisfied with the English settlement of the First Rebellion, initially tried to stay out of Fitzmaurice's rebellion and attempted to raise the Geraldines to put it down. However, he managed to assemble only 60 men in contrast to the thousands raised at short notice by his brother John, indicating that most of the Fitzgeralds and their allies sympathized with the rebellion. A number of the invasion force went to other parts of Ireland. A small number went to Carrigafoyle Castle on the southern banks of the River Shannon, the seat of the Earl of Desmond. This contingent included an Italian engineer, Captain Julian, who set about perfecting the castle's defences. Fitzmaurice himself mounted a sortie to Connacht to try to provoke rebellion there. However, he was killed in a skirmish with the forces of the Burks of Clan William on 18 August, after his men stole some horses belonging to Theobald Burke. This left the rebellion under the command of John of Desmond, now effectively the leader of the Geraldines. The rebels were left in control of southern Munster and the English did not have enough troops to retake it. Drury, the English Lord Deputy, marched 600 men to Limerick, where he was joined by Nicholas Malby, with a force of 1,100 English soldiers. Drury was in poor health and died shortly afterwards. He left the Crown forces under the command of Malby. Gerald the Earl joins the rebellion. In late October, Malby marched through the Desmond Territory, devastating the countryside there and demanded that Gerald the Earl of Desmond surrender his castle at Askeaton. Desmond refused and resisted when Malby tried to take the castle by force. William Pelham, the Lord Justice of Ireland, then proclaimed Desmond a traitor, meaning that he was to be captured and executed. This forced Gerald and the remaining Fitzgeralds to join the rebellion. The Earl assumed leadership of the rebellion in a spectacular manner. On 13 November 1579, he and his followers sacked the town of Yule, massacring its English garrison, hanging the English officials there, looting the town and abusing the civilian population. Desmond's force then blockaded the city of Cork before withdrawing westwards into the mountains of Kerry. McCarthy Moore, meanwhile chief of the McCarthys, announced his joining of the rebellion by sacking Kinsale, Spring 1580 campaign and the siege of Carrigafoyle Castle. The ferocity of Desmond's actions were repaid in kind by the Crown forces early in the following year. Thomas Butler, 3rd Earl of Ormond, Sir William Pelham and Sir George Carew were sent to Munster to subdue the rebels and proceeded to systematically destroy the Desmond lands in County Limerick.
County Cork and North County Kerry and to kill the civilians who lived there at random. These tactics were intended to cause so much economic and human damage to the Desmond's followers that they would be forced to leave the rebellion. The Crown troops were not only English but also composed of Irish forces antagonistic to the Geraldines, notably, apart from Mormon's followers. The over 1,000 fighting men of the McCarthy Rears of Carberry, and also the Odris Gals. Hugh O'Neill, 3rd Earl of Tyrone also led a contingent from his lands in Ulster, with 1,400 soldiers and assisted by William Winter and his naval forces, William Pelham captured Carrigafoyle, the principal Desmond stronghold at the mouth of River Shannon and massacred the rebel garrison there. They had now cut off the Geraldine forces from the north of the country and prevented a landing of foreign troops into the main Munster port of Limerick. When news of the destruction of Carrigafoyle Castle spread, other Desmond strongholds fell swiftly. The castle at Askeaton was abandoned with its Spanish defenders blowing up the walls, and the garrisons at Newcastle West, Balloon, Rathkill and Ballyduff surrendered soon afterwards. Many of the lords who had joined the rebellion surrendered as well, judging the English to have the upper hand. Those who surrendered included McCarthy, Moore, Roche, Barry and others. It looked as if the rebellion was beaten by the summer of 1580, but it was revived by the outbreak of new rebellion in the eastern province of Leinster. Rebellion in Leinster in July 1580, Fuig McHugh O'Byrne, based in the Wicklow Mountains launched the rebellion in the east of Ireland. He assembled a coalition of local lords and clan leaders, including the Kavanaghs, the O'Tools and the O'Moors. Many of these had already been fighting on and off with English garrisons for several years. In particular, the arbitrary killings by an English officer named Masterson, based in Wicklow, seems to have provoked many into revolt. In a symbolic rejection of English rule, the rebels bestowed the title of King of Leinster on Creon McMurrah Kavanagh, whose ancestors had held this title before the English conquest. O'Byrne was joined by James Eustace, by Count of Boltinglass, an old English march, a Lord of the Pale who was motivated primarily by his devout Catholicism. In August, John of Desmond and Nicola Sanders met Bolting Glass in LAOIs to try to coordinate their forces. But aside from limited cooperation in the Barrow Valley region, they were unable to forge a common strategy. Nevertheless, the outbreak of rebellion so close to the centre of English government in Dublin was of grave concern to the English. Sir Henry Sidney the former Lord Deputy of Ireland influenced the response from his membership of the Privy Council and in August 1588 new Lord Deputy, Arthur Gray, 14th Baron Gray de Wilton was sent from England with 6,000 troops. Gray's immediate priority was to put down the Leinster Rebellion. On 25 August 1580, English forces under Grey were routed in the Battle of Glenmalure with the forces of Oburn and Viscount Boltinglass. While trying to storm Oburn's fortress at Glenmalure in the heart of the Wicklow Mountains, they were ambushed and mauled, losing over 800 men killed. William Stanley was sent by Grader Wilton to defend the pale area of Leinster. For the remainder of the war, O'Byrne and his allies raided English settlements in the east and southeast, but were unable to take strategic advantage of their victory at Glenmalure. The rebellion and its aftermath saw a number of people from the pale and other old English areas such as Wexford hanged as traitors. Those executed included Dermot O'Hurley the Catholic Archbishop of Cashel and Margaret Ball the wife of the Lord Mayor of Dublin, also died in prison in Dublin Castle. Those executed often proclaimed their Catholic faith on the scaffold and were honoured by their church as Catholic martyrs. These executions were a major factor in the long-term alienation of the Old English from the English state in Ireland. 1580 Papal Landing and the Smerrick Massacre On 10 September 1580, 600 papal troops commanded by Sebastiano di San Giuseppe, landed in Smerrick. 
near the same point where Fitzmaurice had landed the previous year. They had been paid for and sent by Pope Gregory to aid the rebellion. Desmond, Baltinglass and John of Desmond made an effort to link up with the expeditionary force but English forces under Ormond and Grey blocked them in. Prompt naval action by Richard Bingham blockaded the papal forces ships into the bay at Smerick. San Giuseppe had no choice but to fortify his men in the fort at Dun in OIR. In October 1580, Grader Wilton with up to 4,000 troops arrived at Smerick and laid siege to the garrison. The invasion forces were geographically isolated on the tip of the narrow Dingle Peninsula, cut off by Mount Brandon on one side and the much larger English force on the other. They had no means of escape. In addition, the English had brought up heavy artillery by sea, which rapidly broke down the improvised defences of Dun and OIR. After a three-day siege, Commander di San Giuseppe surrendered on 10 October 1580. Grader Wilton ordered the massacre of the invasion forces, sparing only the commanders. Italian and Spanish troops, and Irish men and women, were beheaded and their bodies thrown into the sea. Among the English soldiers present at the siege and massacre was the writer and explorer Walter Raleigh. This was brought against him as a criminal charge in one of his trials. Raleigh argued that he was obliged to obey the commands of his superior officer, but he was unable to exonerate himself.